Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today we're going to answer the question, what is it about the 458? What makes the 458 so enticing for people to purchase that over and above cars like the 488, the F8, um, perceivably the SF90, obviously the SF90 is a completely different price bracket, um, but over other cars in the similar sort of supercar range um, and you know, over and above McLarens and such like as well, of course, um, and Lamborghinis. So uh, first of all, we're going to talk about the exterior of the car, the styling, the engine, suspension, etc. Then we're going to go for a drive and we're going to talk about the interior of the car and what makes the interior so special. This is the first cold day of winter, so we've got a real cold snap. So it's zero degrees today. I think it's maybe going to push up to three degrees. So bear with us. This is probably going to be the last drive of the 458 for 2021. Probably be put um, into mostly hibernation, bring it out on uh, any warm days that we get. So this might be the last day of driving. So we're going to take it a bit easy on the driving, obviously, because the roads may be a little bit icy. I wouldn't normally drive in this weather, but the things I do for my viewers, eh? <laughs> so many believe the styling of the 458 is the pinnacle of the Ferrari supercar styling and that it hasn't been bettered yet. It was obviously styled by Pinafrina. Um, the, the thing that I really love about the 458 styling, obviously it's very objective, but it's very clean lines. So you've got the, the quite sharp angular aggressive lines of the front of the car um, coming down to the curvatures of the side of the car, the roundest aspects of the car. And you're coming down and this aspect, particularly the rear haunches of the car, you haven't got those big vents required by an intercooler for a turbo to actually provide cooling air into the intercooler. Obviously, that's with the turbo cars from the 408 and the F8 onwards. So not only do they have, for me, do you have the aspect of the separation with the, between turbos and the naturally aspirated car in the 458 and the 488 and the F8 and going upwards, the SF90 the hybrid, etc. Um, but you also have the fact that you have the clean lines afforded by the naturally aspirated car. Now, obviously, that was intentional with Pinafrina when they designed it, but it just provides a real classic line and really aids to the beauty of the 458. Um, of, also, you've got additions such like the cues on the door handle, the 488 and the F8 door handle has the actual, um, it has a cut, uh, sort of a, an angular line in it, which helps um, separate the, or break the, the airflow up to, to prevent there being any negative airflow around this area. But it actually makes the door handle look flipping awful. It's not a very good styling cue. So this is a, this is a lot better styling cue. And of course, the styling of the 458 is a progression from pretty much from the 348, from the 348 up to the 355, the 430, and of course, progressing um, um, in between the 430 and the 348, the 360, and, and then up to the 458. You know, the 458 was a big change um, from the 430. It was a substantial leapfrog forwards, which Ferrari do this every now and again. The 488 and the F8 are a progression from the styling of the 458, hence why they've got a similar design on the front. Um, but in my opinion, you know, the lines aren't as clean cut and they're not as, they're not as, um, as well sculpted as they are on the 458. The only aspect that I would say on the 458 that I've never been too um, endeared to is the actual headlights. I mean, it is very particular to the 458 and obviously the 488 and the F8. Um, but the, um, just, just the actual headlight design for the thin section for the side lights has just ne never been sort of that enamored to it. But uh, it, you know, obviously it's, uh, um, I've warmed to it and uh, I can understand why it was styled into, into the actual car as it was because you couldn't have the rest of this section of the front end, front haunches of the car and obviously the bonnet, etc., or frunk as they call it, um, in the manner it is without having the, the headlights styled and the side lights styled in that manner. I mean, even if you look at the, the way that they've actually styled the actual um, venting into the actual, into the front radiators of the car, you know, this is very well styled as well. It's just beautifully, beautifully put together, this car. The, the door mirror is fantastically designed, beautiful sculpted. Um, just the roof of the car, I mean, this is the spider. And to be able to integrate a folding roof in a the manner they have in this car, to actually make the car almost as beautiful with the roof up as it is down on a spider, that's very rare. And of course, this is the first Ferrari to actually have an aluminium and hard top folding roof. So pretty cool in its style. It was, it was very much a breakthrough car. 
and a breakthrough for all the, in all the positive way as well. There's you know, very few negatives. The only negative could be the aspect with regards to the folding roof um, that you can't actually operate the roof when you're driving. But as you know, check my video below, a mod for car smart top unit actually overcame that issue, which I've fitted to this car. And I have an installation video and review of that unit in my, in my uh, playlist below, in the supercar playlist. So check that out if you want to see some more about that. And if you want a discount for that, check my video, the discount codes in the video. Coming around to the back of the car now, the only thing that they've moved away from, from tradition, is normally traditionally they'd have four rear lights. They've moved it across to two lights. It does actually work on the 458. So for the F8, they did actually reintroduce the quad rear lights um, to bring that styling back in again. Um, for me, it does work because again, if you had four rear lights, you wouldn't have the rest of this styling in the manner that it is. So. You know, you can't have it all. And with regards to the actual, what used to be the challenge section or the, or the, the rear grill section, which was always known as the challenge grill, of course, in the 360 challenge Stradale, etc. Um, they've introduced this in a separated way on the 458 by actually having it in carbon fiber, which is pretty cool. Obviously that's an option. You can have it in a normal base color as well, but to introduce it in carbon fiber, it, it sort of gives that, gives that cue back again to the 360 challenge Stradale, to the actual challenge grill which I really like, you know, it's really good. Then of course you've got the triple exhaust pipe, which has a cue back to the actual F40. So you bring across many other Ferrari car designs into the 458, which is really cool. Um, and and it's, it's, again, makes the 458 the car that it is. This is what Ferraris are all about, the engine, the engine and the chassis. Of course, it's a naturally aspirated engine, um, whether you think that's a thing or not that makes these 458s a desirable thing, it, it does make a hell of a difference. Um, and it does mean that you get seamless power. Yeah, the 488 and the F8, the turbos on them are very linear. And it does mean the, the, the power is very linear, but this makes a hell of a difference. And of course, you haven't got any turbos in the exhaust line to actually break up the sound and of course the separation in the sound. So you get a naturally aspirated um, Ferrari buzz sound. And it's the bus sound as opposed to a grout. Now, why is that? Well, because Ferraris use a flat plane crank. Now, flat plane crankshaft um, is, lin is very flat and it's at a single, on a single plane, hence sing single plane, flat plane crankshaft, as opposed to a cross plane crank, like most V8s. These are single plane crank um, because it, it provides um, benefits. For example, it allows the actual crankshaft to spin faster. Now, why does it enable that? Well, because it hasn't got counterweights because all the journals are on the same plane. So you don't have to have counterweights for the journals, for the pistons, for the weight of the pistons to offset the pistons weight. So it means that you actually have a lighter crankshaft. What does a lighter crankshaft mean? Well, it means of course it can rotate more quickly. That means you can actually spin it up faster and rev to a higher RPM. Of course, this revs to 9,000 RPM. So it's pretty cool. Um, it also produces the sound in a particular way. Now, Ferrari V8s, have a, a firing order which, which goes from one bank to the other. So it starts, I believe, in the right bank, then goes right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, etc. So it opposes in each bank, fires in each bank alternately. That produces, alongside with the flat plane crank, a certain particular sound, um, which, is, which makes the 458 Ferrari sound. So if you introduce an IP exhaust system with something like an X pipe, the X pipe actually, what it does is, it's shaped like an X, and it's, it's the exhaust system fitted around this section below the actual air filter. And that mixes the emissions from both banks and that produces the, the additional howling sound. Now, if you, if you um, direct the, the emissions um, through the actual X pipe, um, omitting the actual cat, which you can do with valve systems, then you get a straight through to the X pipe. You get a mixing of the banks you get a mixing of the exhaust emissions through the banks and you get that beautiful Ferrari F1 sound. That Ferrari scream is very much sought after and that, and that produces that F1-like sound that you can get with these cars. Of course, you cannot get that with a 488 and an F8. You can't get that with a, with a, with a, um, a force-fed engine, i.e. a turboed engine. Force-fed by meaning, of course, that the actual turbos force the actual air into the actual cylinders. So, without going too much in depth about the actual engine, that's, that's, that's pretty much why you get that. There's other aspects as well. 
um, but mainly it's the flat plane crank, the fact it's naturally aspirated and the, the particular firing order that Ferrari, Ferrari have introduced for the flat plane crank V8 engines. So now we're going to take the car out, we're going to talk to you about the interior and what, that makes, what makes the interior so enticing and what it's like to drive. So the 458 has a definitive interior. My particular model has a lot of carbon so it's, it's a very sporty interior as opposed to a classic interior. But it's very much, it's, it's, it's very hard to put your finger definitively on it, but it, 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 it has a supercar interior. It's what people would expect of a supercar interior. Now, what would people expect? Well, they would expect refinements um, to a certain degree, but you could, you could arguably say harsh, inf harsh refinements, because obviously it's not a, a comfort car per se, um, but they would expect but they would expect um, you know, particular luxurious styling, sporty styling, and the 458 has that in spades, of course, very much so. <laughs> there, was a, there, was just some, there was just some youngsters there by the side of the traffic lights, and they were, they were uh, rushed along to, to look at the car and um, doing the, the rev signs. Uh, I give them a little bit of what they're asking for. It's, I think it's uh, turnout from the from the school, so a lot of youngsters around in the roads at the moment. Um, so obviously they all love these types of cars, which is cool. It's a cool aspect. So to continue on, yeah, the interior it's very sporty. A lot of carbon fibre. It's exactly what you would expect to see in a supercar. Um, very refined. Um, very um, very refined. Very uh, what can you say? Expensive looking, you know. Um, very expensive. The the designing in the interior of the 458 um, isn't a derivative of the 348. The 3, 348, the 355, um, the 360, and the 430 were very different. Um, the 430 between the between the 458 were very different interiors. So the 458 again moved it very very much further forward. You got the the styling of the actual vents for for the um, for the air conditioner for the heating system. That's very definitive in a 458 styling. Um, you know much so very angular in its styling as well on interior obviously with the 458 you've got the steering wheel and the intro introduction of a lot of the controls if not all the controls actually onto the steering wheel for the good or bad of it and um, when I said about it of course I'm referring to the usual indicator situation but it is what it is it's uh, it's better in the later cars and this styling actually um, was continued forward pretty much to the 488 and the F8. They are very, very similar in their interiors. The only separation from this styling was um, moving across actually to the SF90, to, to the 296, and you had the 812, which was a, a sort of middle ground between the 458 and the, and the SF90. The SF90 and the Roma, of course, introduced the new electronic uh, design and, it, and the, touch, the touch controls on the actual steering wheel and more of an electronic design to the, to the um, gauges as well, whereas the actual rev counters electronic version as well which I think is a bad thing I think electronics data car very badly and that's exactly why they didn't introduce electronics into the Chiron and, and the Veyron because they knew it was going to date the car um, of course with the with the 296 and the Roma um, and the SF90 and um, very much so with the Roma you've got the iPad <laughs> styling in the middle with this big electronic screen so um, that's that's very painful to the eyes in my opinion but again it is, it is what it is and I think that's very much going to date those cars going forward as well. So yeah you've got a very definitive supercar styling with the 458 with the 458 interior and if you move in, move across to the actual centre console and mine it's actually got a centre console in carbon fibre but it's very much a, 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 a a supercar centre console as well. It's actually very svelte in its styling. You, the way the actual buttons are engineered, it's much like you're in a bit of a cockpit of an aircraft or a helicopter in how they're styled. Um, and of course in mine as well, you have a full carbon fibre centre console. So I'm just navigating around about the moment. You have a full centre console in, in carbon fibre as well. I'm just gonna put it onto bumpy road now as well because we've got a bit of a bumpy area that we're going through. The dashboard is typical supercar. You always have quite substantial dashboards in supercars as well, with the screen a fair distance away from you. And of course the screen very angular, very raked towards you, um, as is definitive styling in a, in a supercar to have the front very, very raked um, to give you that shape. Um, with, the, with that provides for a, a long dash, a long dash, which means you've got a lot of lever on the top of the dashboard. Um, and of course there is the, the issue 
with cars that are in a hotter climate where the actual lever on the dashboard shrinks. Um, so you have to be mindful of that of leaving the car out in, uh, in hot weather because the lever shrinks at the end of the day. So it's a living um, product, you know, it will shrink. A definitive aspect of a supercar as well and of a car of this nature, of, of a, a, a special luxurious car in the, in the, for a, that would be provided in the, in the Ferrari brand, are the seats. And these seats are excellent. They're the actual carbon fibre racing seats, which are very sought after again in the 458. Um, you know, in, in, the, in the future, I'm going to do a buyer's guide for the 458 and very much um, carbon fibre racing seats will be part of the buyer's guide because they are so sought after. There's some people um, actually do prefer the comfort seats, which has electronics for the positioning of the seat. And of course they're heated, etc. But 90% of people, even even potentially more than 90% of the of the of the um, proper of the perceivable buying market for a 458 will actually want the cars with carbon fiber racing seats. And these carbon fiber racing seats, unlike many other um, racing seats, for example in the Senna, um, these are very comfortable. They support you very well. They hold you in a good position, and you know you could go on hundreds of miles journey in this car, um, and you'd have no issues with with any back posture problems. You know they, they hold your posture very well, very supportive, and of course, over and above that, potentially being a Ferrari, they look bloody cool. <laughs> so um, they look cool, and they they keep the value of the car. Um, they help to retain the value of the car and, and again that's a very important thing for, um, for Ferraris because a lot of people have a lot of money invested in these cars. With regards to the driving experience, again you know how many times can I say it, it's very much a supercar driving experience. The actual positioning of the wheel and uh, the driving positioning, the driving uh, stance in the car, the driving position is very much Italian. Uh, you have a slight twist to the left from what I can feel if I analyse it at the moment. The steering wheel, fortunately you can now move the steering wheel upwards, downwards and forwards and aft um, electronically. So that's quite cool. I would prefer that you could move the steering wheel a little bit more further forwards and backwards, forwards in particular, because that would help me with the fact that I have long legs and shorter arms in relation because most of my height is actually in my legs, not in my body, uh, being six foot one. Uh, which is beneficial when you're actually sitting down in a in a car like this because it gives you plenty of headroom because again most of my height is in my legs uh, but it's problematic if you can't move the seat further enough back but I can on the 458 you've got plenty of leg room in the 458 so no issues there and it's not too bad on steering wheel um, with regards to reach it's not too bad at all the, the the feeling and driving position of the car is fantastic the feel of the steering wheel is just pretty much perfect in my opinion uh, the location of some of the controls is dubious with regards to the horn. Constantly, you know, trying to hit the horn if I was going to hit the horn in the centre part of the car where the airbag is. Of course, you're not going to get any any joy there. The uh, the horn is located on the steering wheel where your thumbs would would rest, um, but it's it's not really conducive to to action in the horn and the actual positioning of the horn buttons themselves, either side of the steering wheel for each thumb is, is um, very particular, very specific, so it's very easy to miss it. So if you're frantically trying to press the horn, um, you might miss it, and of course, you know, it could be too late then, because when you want to hit the horn for an emergency, it's um, something that needs to happen straight away, something that needs to be very, very instinctive. Um, obviously, the styling of the, of the steering wheel with regards to the indications such like, I've covered that off before in my, in my um, video with regards to the steering wheel, check the playlist, the supercar playlist for that video on the steering wheel for the pros and cons of the, of the 458 steering wheel. The feel of the car is very very direct, the steering rack is very fast. Um, suspension, wishbone suspension, uh, which again aids, you know, is very much the definitive design for a, a supercar. The steering affords the ability to have just put in very little inputs to be able to um, move the car and place the car wherever you want it to be. It's very agile. And though it doesn't have the, the advanced aerodynamics of the 488 and the F8, particularly the F8 from that, from that particular uh, two series of cars, um, and in, in the fact special, speciality, um, it's, um, it still has very good airflow over the car and it does actually have um, good suction to the road. So you, so you very much do have good aerodynamics on this car. 
and when you're cornering you can really feel that potential it really holds the car to the road especially when you compare it with something like a 993 if you were to compare the 458 across some of the other major brands that are competitors Lamborghini McLaren say for example McLaren's their interiors just aren't very super carish to be honest um, not in my mind anyway yeah they have a lot of Al Alcantara in them um, but for me they just don't scream supercar not like a Ferrari does yeah the 650s is a bit better but um, still the 650 the interior still doesn't scream supercar and Lamborghini well Lamborghinis are very much Audi on their interiors now yeah they don't break on the interior now um, and yeah they're better designed on their interior but they're using plastic control knobs and plastic switches it's very much Audi they're very much pulling from the Audi parts bin whereas Ferrari is very bespoke but the, the main negative aspect of the getting a, a good Ferrari interior is the fact you've got to pay for it yeah you can go for a very classic um, look in a Ferrari interior um, where it is very much uh, an aluminium styling and very flat color so you'd have the the you know dark colors for the actual dash 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 should be black in the in the case of the actual 458 as opposed to carbon fiber but it just it just really you've got to you know if you're spending all that money on a supercar then really you've got to have it in carbon fiber um, very few of these 458s are on the market at the moment very much so for this reason that they're very sought after and of course we have this um, perceivable bubble at the moment brought upon by the actual coronavirus situation so there's very few 458s on the market and they're very very sought after so of all the supercars you know supercars in general are very rare at the moment very few of them are around um, because you just can't get hold of them so of course people are snapping them up from the second hand market um, and of course within those themselves everybody wants a 458 um, last of the naturally aspirated last of the cool Pininfarino styling when trying to analyze the actual driving experience of this car I think a good example is the fact that in the last few days I've been driving a few other cars and my daily driver at the moment is um, having the engine part of the engine rebuilt and having some work done on it for the MOT so I've, I haven't been you know I've been driving various other cars I've been in buses and, <laughs> and various other transport you've got to do what you've got to do to, to get around and I, I borrowed a van from a friend and it was a very good van very good of him to, to, to lend me the van as well very kind but when you when you've been out of this car for a while you actually appreciate when you get back into it it's even though the 458 is very refined you very much get that supercar feel about the car you're you're not in there's no other car like this you, you can't get into any other type of car unless it's a hardened supercar that feels like the feel that feels the way this does and of course that sounds the way this does as well which is key now I've got a product that I'll be fitting to the car that will enhance the oral abilities of this car. Um, it's, um, it's a unit that I'm performing a review on going forward. The other, the other aspect of this, you know, why, why do people choose a 458 over, a, over more, than more of the modern cars and some of the, uh, some of the competitors? Because it's a 458. People recognise this car. People know it's a 458. Yeah, people who, who don't know supercars may not know particularly which model it is but you'll be surprised how many people know this is a 458 it's, it's really surprised me 458 really definitively um, polarized people's viewpoints on supercars um, it very much is is where Ferrari is concerned on supercars it's very much the way forward that people see 458 onwards um, if you're into a classic type car then you look backwards you go behind you go before a 458 the 430 is sort of a middle ground because um, the car that everybody wants in the 430 of course is the manual gearbox because at the time everybody chose the paddle shift automated single plate clutch um, gearbox but um, they actually burn out clutches and well they're, they're not as efficient on clutches as, as the, the manual clutch system and because the manual clutch system is so rare because everybody's after manual gearboxes nowadays manual because you can't get them in the modern cars obviously that wasn't an option available in the 458 which is the first supercar Oh, the first, it was the first Ferrari supercar where the actual manual gearbox option wasn't an option. A really cool thing, we're just joining the motorway here so we can talk to you a little bit about the refinements of driving on the motorway. A really cool thing about, um, about this car as well is that the gearbox, the automotive the gearbox is great. 
Um, I've driven most of this journey with it in auto mode, which you know most of you would be thinking, heaven, you know, get it into get it into manual mode, get the paddles going. But it's actually very refined in the auto mode, and sometimes you just want to drive it in auto mode. Especially, you know, for me as I am now, I'm talking to the camera a lot. Therefore, you know, I don't want to be too distracted. Obviously, you've got to be. Dis I'm dis don't want to be distracted from driving, but you don't want to be have an additional distraction by actually changing the gearbox yourself. So it makes it a lot easier. And the auto box is very refined. Um, yeah, it changes gear earlier. You know, you can be doing 30 miles an hour, or 40 miles an hour, and it'll have you in seventh gear, which isn't great. Um, and it, you know, it does learn your driving approaches. It does learn your driving ways. Um, to some degree, but in general, it, it likes to get you in a in a the down downstream gears as, as quickly as possible for fuel economy, uh, which is quite bizarre, really, when you think about it being a, a supercar V8. There ain't much fuel economy about this engine, I can assure you. And we're on the motorway now, as I said. Sound brakes you know again that's a lot because the aerodynamics of the car and the ceiling of the car the ceiling of the windows and such like um, it's a very comfortable car to drive to drive on, on motorway speeds um, no you know very low noise the, the actual car revs I'm in seventh gear now um, and it's doing you know 3,000 rpm so we're doing sort of around 70 and we're doing 3,000 rpm so it's not howling it's not screaming yeah, I mean, it would be great if I had an eighth gear like the Roma and the SF90 have, uh, because they've got the more the, the more modern gearbox, the new advanced gearbox, which has an eighth sort of overdrive gear. So it would be cool to have that overdrive gear, but hell, it's a supercar, you know? You, you, you wouldn't expect that to be in a supercar. And you don't really need it. As I say, you know, doing 70 motorway speed, 70, 75 in a motorway, you're around 3,000 RPM anyway. That's, it's not screaming, you know? It's not howling. So there is a level of fuel economy to it and obviously you don't want it to be howling at you anyway when you're driving on motorway speeds for any particular um, duration because it's going to make the driving experience very uncomfortable. That may have been the way for earlier supercars but again the 458 is a lot more of a refined supercar. When you're looking out the front as well it's, it's mentioned by a lot of people it's so true you know it's a very cool very cool view you get out the front of this car you know you've got the the front haunches of the car you can see um, either side and uh, it helps you to guide the car it helps you to gain an appreciation of where the limits are of the car of the actual from, from the point of view of spatial awareness and of course it looks cool it's part of the definitive styling of the front of the car it's just out there on its own really it's out there on its own there's only one car that sounds like a 458 and looks like a 458 and that's a 458 and it's a, that's a very positive aspect and that's what people want and I don't blame them and that's why I bought one. Hope you really enjoyed the video guys if you did please give it a thumbs up give it a like plenty more great content to come plenty more great 458 content to come thanks a lot for watching guys if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing and we'll catch you in the next video